As you can tell when it comes to the numbers, New York State budget is massive. It's now more than $210 billion. And just for context, we told you earlier it was Florida and Pennsylvania combined. It's also twice the size of Florida. And just 10 years ago, the state budget was much smaller at about $132 billion. That's an increase of more than 50% in the last decade. And as you can imagine, there is a lot packed in there. For more on that, I turned this week to budget expert Patrick Orecki from the Citizens Budget Commission. Patrick, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dan. Of course. So we have the state budget, Governor Kathy Hochul's proposed state budget. It's out. I want to start first with the state's financial condition. So we've heard a lot in the past few days about how New York is flush with cash. We have a lot in hand. I want to put some context to that. So are we doing good financially just in general, like it was any other year, or are we just doing well in terms of the pandemic? Like, are we back to normal or are we doing better than where we were before the pandemic? Simply put, we are doing better than we were before the pandemic. Uh, the budget that was proposed this week by the governor has budget balance not only this year, so for the year that the budget covers, but also for the next four years. And that level of budget balance is something that we really haven't seen pretty much ever. Um, so it's really incredible that the state has materialized as many state tax receipts as it has to close the gaps that did exist pre-pandemic and actually have budget balance for this long. Yeah, let's talk about those receipts. We're talking about revenue coming into the state. So we have a lot more revenue right now than I think we anticipated having when we passed last year's state budget last March and April. So is that because of all the federal money that we got or is it because of these higher tax rates that we put in on the wealthy? I think we've seen in the past few days, a couple of people say, well, don't count out that tax hike. So what's the balance there? Is it mostly just that federal money or is a fair share part of those tax increases that we put in effect last year? Yeah, it's really three things. The first is the federal aid, um, not only some targeted aids for schools and for the Medicaid program, but general fiscal relief that the federal government authorized as well. The second thing is the just base tax receipts. So actually, even before considering the tax actions that were taken last year, the tax receipts losses that the state was expecting during the pandemic never materialized. And in fact, the tax base was a little bit stronger because the stock market and high income earners remained so solid throughout the pandemic. And then the third thing, like you said, is the actual tax increases that were enacted last year. So those were about four to $5 billion annually in additional receipts that were added to. So all three of those things combined to completely kind of flip the script from what was expected even a year ago. On the middle item, the tax receipts, are we just talking about income tax receipts or are we talking about more uh, income, sales tax, that kind of thing, all across the board receipts? It's basically across the board. Um, personal income tax receipts are the biggest single state tax receipt that we receive. And specifically, a lot of our uh, personal income tax receipts come from high income earners. So when high income earners do really well and when the stock market and capital gains do really well, the state benefits from that kind of upside risk in our tax structure. All right, so the other side of this is the spending side of it. We have a total budget, all funds, and that means state operating funds, federal funds, capital funds, all the money across the board is equal to $216 billion under this budget proposal from the governor. So how does that increase look like compared to other years? We talked about this a little bit previously this week, but in terms of increases, I believe it was in 2011, the state budget was $130 billion. So we've gone up quite a bit since then. Is the increase uh, similar to what we've seen in recent years over the past decade, or is it larger, smaller? Yeah, the big jump really happened in this current year. So we jumped above $200 billion for the first time this year. Um, and we expected the budget to actually go down a little bit in what was proposed for next year. And that did not happen. We're actually going to increase a little bit to $216 billion, like you said. And again, that's because federal receipts have come in high, state tax receipts have come in high. All of these uh, kind of inflows have been so positive that it allows for more spending this year and next year as well. So just to give our viewers some context, what are these big parts of the budget that the state spends money on? I think uh, when I look at it, I'm looking at things like uh, schools and Medicaid, but when we're looking at the budget as, this, uh, as a pie chart, let's call it, where's the money mostly going here? Yeah, two thirds of the budget is spent on three 
general purposes. The biggest is the Medicaid program. So Medicaid covers right now about 7 million New Yorkers, provides health care coverage for them. It's a little over $80 billion a year in total spending. Second biggest thing is on schools. So that's over $30 billion a year. And the third big bucket is on the state's workforce. So those three together are about two thirds of that total $216 billion pie. And out of those, do we see any larger than normal increases in those those big spending areas in Hochul's budget? Yeah, especially in Medicaid and in school spending. Uh, the Medicaid program added a lot of people during the course of the pandemic. A lot of people shifted from having coverage through their job into the Medicaid program, maybe temporarily, um, maybe for a longer spell. On schools, big increases were enacted last year as part of the budget negotiations. So a lot of increased spending on schools was already booked as of last April. Um, so we do see some marginal increases in what was expected to be spent on schools, but not as uh, significant as as was enacted last year. You know, this is a, a much easier conversation than previous years, because I think it was just two years ago that we had a multi-billion dollar deficit, something around $6 billion heading into the budget season. This year, we don't have a deficit, and the budget, as you said, doesn't have a deficit in these out-year uh, projections in the next couple of years as well. Do you think that makes it harder or easier to, to form a final state budget in the next couple of months? Usually we're asking the question of, okay, do we have enough money to spend on this thing? But this time around, it's more of a question of, we have all of this money, what are we gonna do with it? Does that make it harder? I think in some ways it's easier, in some ways it's harder. I mean, it's certainly easier to be able to support what you wanna su support, and then it comes down to prioritizing within that kind of wish list. Um, what's harder about it is that there are a lot of asks and a lot of things to identify. And certainly right now in current circumstances, this is a pandemic budget still. So there are urgent recovery needs and you know continued needs for businesses, for individuals, for schools across the board. So the next two and a half months will be a, a very long discussion between the governor and the legislature about prioritizing exactly how everything fits in. Yeah, it's gonna be a really interesting year to watch because as I said, the fight is not so much about where do we put the money that we don't have, it's where do we put the money that we do have. So we'll have you back just to get some more analysis on that. Until then, Patrick Orecki from the Citizens Budget Commission, thank you so much. Thank you.